Okay, so here's what we're going to do for today. Um, we had you work, and you guys are actually a little bit ahead on your reading as to where the classrooms are. So what we're going to do today, um, I'm going to do two problems. Uh, I'm going to do problem 8-1 out of the workbook, and I'm going to do problem 11-1 out of the workbook, okay? Um, chapter 8 and 11, uh, 8 is retirement, and 11 is the... Um, <clears throat> is the uh, beginning of itemized deductions. So I'll kind of talk about and review the topics as we go through. So, okay, uh, number three. Okay, somebody missed a quiz on number three. Number three would have been, uh, let's see. Number three was itemized deductions. Itemized deductions, all right. And on the itemized deductions, the answers were medical expenses, medical expenses, property taxes, property taxes, real estate, excuse me, mortgage interest, mortgage interest, charitable contributions, and miscellaneous deductions, okay? All right, so. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Where would you find, you said they were in the answers? What's that? You said these ans these were in the answers section of our book? Where no, were actually I what I just gave you? Yes. Yeah. The areas and topics that you'll need to know for the midterm. Oh, okay. So when you go to do the computer midterm, okay, all right. You just go in and find these in the chapters, right? Yeah, or, you know, when you're doing problems, you know, the different things that you'll do that uh, are parts of that, okay? Okay. You got a leg up on everybody. All right. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, problem 8-1, and again, I'll talk, talk about some of the topics from Chapter 8 as we go along, okay? So we're going to be doing Elmer Jones, if you have your workbook. He's on uh, page 80. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we have Elmer Jones, and we have his wife, Elizabeth. Okay. All right. And they live at 65 River Oak Drive. All right. We're just going to put them in Amherst. Uh, again, always make sure that you put in that email address. Okay. We have their phone numbers.
Okay. Uh, date of birth. Okay. And for this problem, make sure you kind of realize what their ages are. We have Elmer at 65, and we have um, Elizabeth at 58, okay? Elmer is reti oops, retired, and Elizabeth sounds like she's semi-retired, okay? They're doing a married filing joint return, all right? No children. They lived in New York all year long, and that will be something that's important, okay? Uh, they're going to electronically file. Uh, they're not doing the fee collect. Again, that's where you would have the fee to do the return taken out of the refund. All right, we're going to use M&T for their bank account information. Okay, and I'm just going to use their zip code for their PIN number. All right. Uh, this is problem eight one that we're doing. Okay. Okay, so we're on to the page one of the 1040. If we look at the little bio that's on page 79 in your workbook, it says Elmer and Elizabeth filed a 1040A last year. Since it's a 1040A, we know that they did not itemize their return. Okay, so our question, did you itemize? We'll put down no. If it were yes, then we'd have to consider whether their um, refund from the previous year would be taxable. Okay. Um, Elmer and Elizabeth get a refund. They'd like it direct deposited. We talked about that. We have some information on them. And it states that they had health care the entire year. So we'll go to our ACA worksheet. They did not get it from the marketplace. They do not need an exemption. And they had insurance, minimum essential coverage, the entire year. Okay. All right. So. Let's go to page 81, all right? Looks like Elizabeth is working. She's working at a little place called Nutty For You, okay? So we're gonna put in her information for Nutty For You. All right. And she was earning $11,548. And she had 500 withheld. Okay. Uh, we don't see anything in box 12 or box 14 on the W-2. So we can take out the 414. You can just delete that. Did not participate in any retirement plan. And according to this, she had 500 and dollars and 21 cents taken out of her W-2, okay? All right, now, chapter eight talked a lot about retirement, and retirement uh, funds are usually shown and dispersed on a 1099-R, okay? So, we're gonna go back to page one of our 1040, all right? And we're gonna take a look at her, uh, excuse me, Elmer's 1099-R from his pension. So if we go down to line 16A, we go over to our box, we can either hit F9 or we can create a link and it'll bring up a 1099R for us, okay? Basically what this is, it's our W-2 for our retirement funds, okay? In this case, and very important on these, the first thing that you make sure you do 
is determined whether it's the taxpayer or the spouse on the return, okay? Uh, again, just like the W-2, we're gonna check and make sure the address matches. We will put in the ID number for the pension fund. Okay, it says my pension. Now, on this line one, you can see that he has gross distribution and taxable amount, okay? So we have $15,000 is the gross distribution. And because of the pension type that it is, all of it is taxable, okay? Sometimes, see if my little drawing thing works here. Sometimes you'll get over here where the taxable amount is not determined, okay? The taxable amount is not determined. You'll get that box checked, and box two would be empty. Okay? All right. Now, when that happens, oops, hold on. Okay. This is where we'll talk about the simplified method. Okay? So down at the bottom, is what's called the simplified method. This is how we would determine how much of that pension of his is taxable if box two was empty and the box in 2B that the total taxable amount's not determined, okay? All right, okay. So down here in the bottom, what we would do is we would put the 15,000, whoops, 15,000 in here, okay? We would determine his age when he took the pension. We're gonna say 65. And we're gonna say that he got it all 12 months, okay? As you can see, line seven calculates for you the taxable amount, all right? So if you have a pension where somebody does not know the taxable amount of their distribution throughout the year, you can calculate it based on this simplified method, okay? All right. But in this one, it was determined for us, okay? So we're just gonna take that out of there. All right. And we're gonna go back up to the top and see that that was there, okay? Now, just as like pay, box four shows us that he had $1,500 taken out. Pretty standard, 10% withholding, all right? Now, this is the other very, very important box, okay? So, right here, we have our code, okay? This is what's gonna determine how this is handled as far as taxes, okay? We know up above in box one and two, we had the gross and taxable amount, but in this one, we're going to determine how it is handled, okay? So, we go into our box, we can hit F1, all right. And in F1, we can see that we have a distribution code, all right. And on that, has several options for us, all the different things that we can do. Now this is in your textbook, okay? So you can look them up there as far as what the different things mean, or, it will be on the back of the 1099R that you would receive from a client. Number one typically is, um, and this is in the quiz, I know on chapter eight, but number one is typically early distribution. Somebody is under 59 and a half. Two is early distribution, but exceptions apply. An instance of that is somebody is, is uh, given early retirement at age 55 and they get to take your pension. They don't have to pay a penalty for being under 59 and a half to take that pension, okay? Uh, seven is typically a normal distribution, okay? Uh, G is rollover and Q's will be Roths, okay? In this case, it's a normal distribution. Now, we have a very, very important box, okay? Because this is what makes it worthwhile living in the state of New York, okay? So, down at the bottom here, 
we have this area right here that says state return for use of these boxes. Instructions vary by state. So we're going to go through this for New York, okay? And you might want to write this down uh, just as a kind of a little note, all right? Box one, all right? Box one means that they are 59 and a half. Remember I said to note as to the age of uh, Elmer that he was 68. So box one is means that the taxpayer has reached the age of 59 and a half. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna check box one. All right, okay, so we're gonna check box one. Now, that being said, what that means is if I go to my New York 201 page two, I can see my $15,000 up here at the top in the part that says federal income and adjustments. But as I scroll down here, I can see where it says New York subtractions. In New York, the first $20,000 of pension and annuity income is excluded from income. So basically, anybody's pension that is under $20,000 is tax-free in New York if they have reached their 59 and a half birthday, okay? So you can see by checking that box, I am able to exclude $15,000 of income. All right, so that's where that would carry over. That's why that box is so important. While we're here, you can see on line 27 that any taxable portions of Social Security from the federal refund return are not taxable in New York either. And the entire pension of a New York state, local, and federal government so if you're receiving a federal, state, or local government pension, none of it is taxable in New York. You'll be able to exclude that. That being said, if I go back to my 1099R, box two is government pension. So if this was a government pension for Elmer, we check box two. So box one, they have reached 59 and a half during 2015. And box two means they have a government pension, all right? Because he's 59 and a half, you can see that he doesn't take any state taxes out. Doesn't need to, not taxable, okay? All right, so those are the things that are handled there. All right, so we got Elmer's pension in, okay? So we're gonna move to the document on page 82. This is a, since we found out that Elizabeth was partially retired, she is taking money out of her IRA. So this one, again, very important. Check the box for the spouse. Check the address. We're going to put in the EIN number. She has a pension from somewhere she must have worked called the Harder Company. Okay. She had a gross distribution. $10,000. She had a taxable amount of $10,000. Okay. She had $1,000 of tax withheld. <clears throat> On this one, it shows code one. That means, if we remember correctly, she's 58 years old. So she did not turn 59 and a half during the tax year. So this is an early distribution. Okay. So, it's code one, and as you can see there in the box next to it for the IRA, she had it as an IRA, okay? Now, a couple things happened. We can't check the box, all right? And because she knew it was an early withdrawal, she did take some state tax out of it. So we have $320 down at the bottom, okay? Now, Sometimes what happens with something like this is Elizabeth may have retired, or excuse me, left her job with the harder company, but really didn't retire, but did not realize that she had a IRA or 401k with her previous employer. She may receive this, not realizing that it was given in a lump sum, and she receives a check, and she could roll that over, okay? If we want to do that, we're going to go down to the bottom, of our 1099R, and as you can see down here, okay, we have this exclusion area, okay, 
and the first line says amount rolled over. Okay, so if we want to say that she received this check, did not know that she was going to get it, but does not want to take it because she doesn't want to pay any tax or penalty, all right, she would put in there $10,000, okay? All right, so she can put $10,000 that she rolled that over. That would remove it from taxable income, all right? The way we can see that is if we go back to our 1040 page one, and we scroll down to our IRA distribution. There's the 10,000. However, it says there's a rollover. We would have to explain that she received this from her employer, not knowing that she had a retirement fund and that she rolled it over into another qualified event, or excuse me, qualified account, okay? So you can see that it's not taxable. However, in this situation, she did not roll it over. So we're going to take it out of there. And we're going to go back to that 1040, page one. And we're going to see that the $10,000 is there as taxable. Since she's under 59 and a half, she will be paying a 10% penalty. You can see here on line, page two of the 1040, line 59 additional tax on IRAs, other qualified retirement plans, et cetera. There is her 10% tax penalty. That is calculated on a 5329. So on your tree on the left, you see the 5329. Part one, early distributions. It shows her penalty, okay? Say she took that $10,000 out for their first home or any other, uh, maybe from pay premiums because they were unemployed. Um, she took it out to pay tuition for college. There are exceptions to the tax, not excluding the income, but you can keep it from the 10% tax, okay? While we're here on the 5329, we'll take a look at penalties on distributions, early distributions from education accounts, and they even tax you if you give excess to your IRAs, okay? So that would be there. Excess contributions to your IRAs or Roths, all right? Page two of the 5329 is if you gave too much money, these are education accounts or to a Archer. We don't see those anymore, but we do see health savings accounts. So if you give over the limitation, there is a tax on that, okay? There's a tax on additional tax to a ABLE account. Again, don't see any of those, okay? However, down here at the very bottom, part nine, additional tax on excess accumulation. What this is, this is where when somebody reaches 70 and a half in that year, they are required to take an RMD required minimum distribution. It's a formula based on the amount as of December 31st of the previous year that you have in all of your retirement accounts. It is very important that you take this out in the year that you turn 70 and a half and every year after. If you do not take your RMD in the year that you're supposed to and the required amount, you can see here is the tax on that. So if you're required to take $3,000 out of your retirement accounts when you turn 70 and a half and you do not do that, the government is going to tax you at 50% of that RMD, okay? And trust me, it's almost impossible to get them to reverse on this. A lot of other taxes you can try to explain the situation, but this one is very, very difficult. Okay, all right, so we have our 1099Rs in there, and we've covered some of the topics that we see most often. Now, back to 1040 page one, and we're gonna go down to our social security line. So on the bottom of page 82, we have um, Elmer's 
uh, Social Security Statement. You can see on 20A, go to our box. We're going to create our link. We can see that we have a worksheet for Social Security. Okay. And the section, se second section down says Social Security. This is Elmer's. We always use the number in box three of the SSA 1099 for Social Security. Typically, this uh, document will have pink boxes. But in this case, we're in black and white. He paid Medicare out of his Social Security, so we get to put that on. And he had $300 in withholding to make sure to cover the tax. Okay? All right. So, we have everything in there. for Elmer and Judy, okay? All right. Okay. All right. So we have everything on there for him. So as you can see up in the top, when you do this problem, the federal refund in the blue box up there in the corner, 279, state refund 593. If we go take a look and finish up our New York State, our county of residence, uh, for Elmer and Elizabeth is Erie, okay? Uh, they are in the Hamburg School District. Uh, this question, they are not hiding any money in Switzerland or the Cayman Islands, okay? If we go to page two of the 10, uh, excuse me, New York IT 201, the state return, we can see everything came over exactly as we needed to from the federal. However, we can see here that there was a taxable amount of Social Security due to the household's income, married, filing, joint, and the pension for Elmer. This is his Social Security. Those two added together, we get to exclude from the income. So we have our standard deduction for them, and we have our taxable income, okay? No penalty for the early withdrawal on the state side, just on the federal side, okay? All right, and then all we'd have to complete is at the bottom of the 1040, page two is put in the direct deposit account, and at the bottom of the IT 201, we'd finish up with the, um, the um, information for uh, filing the refund for the state. Okay. All right. Now, Social Security. Everybody always has this misconception that all of your Social Security is taxable. However, depending on the income, and in this case, we have W 2 income on line seven, IRA, pension income above our Social Security, that amount made half, roughly half, of Elmer Social Security taxable, okay? In the chapter, there's a little worksheet. On the back of an SSA 1099, there is a very good condensed worksheet that you will see. So if any of you have ever received the 10, SSA 1099, on the back of that, there is a little sheet there that is very good for calculating the taxable portion. I understand it's after-tax dollars, that was taken out of your paycheck while you were working, and now you're paying tax on it again, okay? Not like the IRAs and the pensions, but that's the way they handle it. Up to 85% of your Social Security can be taxable, okay? All right, so that's kind of a recap on the important topics from Chapter 8, all right? And that's chapter, uh, Problem 8-1, okay? All right, so, any questions from anybody? I'm going to turn the mics off here. All right, any questions on Chapter 8 about different retirement or anything that I covered? No? That's good. That's very good. Okay. All right. Any other questions in general on anything? Well, 
How many people are scared to retire now because they're afraid they're going to have to pay tax on every dollar that they get when they think it was easy street? Besides me. All right. Okay. Uh, here we think retirement's supposed to be easy. Now you got to make all these decisions. All right. So I'm going to mute everybody. And okay. And give me just a second here. If you want to go ahead and turn in your workbook to problem 11 1. 11 1. Okay. So if you go to problem 11 1, we're going to kind of talk about Jason Garland. And it's a good one to cover the things from chapter 11 that talk about itemized deductions, okay? Give me a second here. I'm getting the problem up. Okay. All right. So we're going to work on Jason Garland. Okay. From your workbook, it's page 135. And we have Jason Garland. He is living on 115 Fremont Road. And we're going to put him in Amherst. Okay, and we got his email in there. Again, very important. Makes our job very easy during the summer. Okay, we have uh, phone numbers for him. He was born on 4-10-73, okay? He is a plumber. All right. Okay. He's filing single by himself. All right, so no dependents, so he cannot do head of household. He's a New York resident. He's going to e-file his return. He's not doing a fee collect. And we have his bank account information. All right. And again, we're going to use his zip code for his PIN number. He is authorizing us to act on his behalf to e-file. And we will put in our number, okay? Now, on the bio sheet on 135, it talks about the fact that Jason filed a 1040A last year, okay? So that being said, We'll go down to part way in the income section of the 1040 page one and the itemized deductions we'll put down as a no because you file a 1040. We talked about the uh, electronic filing of the return and the refunds. Okay. All right. Now, one thing we're going to note here that uh, fifth bullet point on page 135 says 
Jason does not have health insurance, okay? So, we're gonna go to our ACA worksheet. No, as far as his uh, marketplace, because he did not have it all year long, it's very hard to get him an exemption. So we're gonna put on there that he did not have minimum essential coverage, okay? So, we'll come back to this, but make sure that on this case, it says that he did not have it for the entire 12 months and he will pay a penalty, all right? Now, let's go to page 137 and we'll put his W-2 in, all right? So we have this for Jason, all right, the address matches, and he worked for Pipe Plumbing Incorporated, okay? Okay, we have his wages on there, 51,288, and we have his tax withheld, okay? Uh, nothing in box 12. However, box 14, he contributed to the United Way out of his payroll. So we're just gonna type over the 414 with the United Way, put in the $104, okay, that he contributed. He did not participate in any type of retirement plan, and he has state withholding at 2321. Now, what I want you to notice is his W-2, look at our blue box up in the corner. Balance due, $1,838, okay? State balance due, 142. So obviously, he did not have enough withholding, okay? But maybe he's anticipating some other things on his tax return. The one thing we will note on the ACA worksheet, page two, is that he is paying an $820 penalty for not having insurance in 2015. All right. This year, that penalty for 2016's tax return could be twelve dollars to $1,400. However, this year, he's paying $820. Okay. So we're going to have that. All right. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about itemized deductions. All right. A lot of it will be covered in the other lectures that are up on the channels that uh, we're covering the classes over the last two days, but we're going to talk just a little bit about it, okay? So, 1040 page one, we've got his W-2 income pretty cut and dry. All the way down to the bottom, we have his adjusted gross income. That travels up to the top of page two of the 1040. You can take either an itemized deduction or a standard deduction. Okay, the textbook talks about the difference between the two. Uh, itemized is where we're going to keep track of things like medical expenses, uh, taxes paid, um, interest paid, charitable contributions, and some other miscellaneous that we'll cover in the next chapter. Okay, but to introduce that, the standard deduction for a single person is 6300 Married filing joint, multiply it by two, 12600 Now, that standard deduction can be increased if any of these boxes up above are checked. So if Jason was 65 and older, we would have one box checked. It would increase his um, standard deduction. There's a little chart in your textbook that talks about each one of those boxes and what value it increases. So if both taxpayers on a joint return um, are uh, 65 and over, their standard deduction will increase over the 12,600 by the amount of boxes that is checked here, okay? And that determined amount is in the boxes, or excuse me, in the table in your textbook, okay? We have the exemptions here for him. So really what we're trying to do, this line 43, our taxable income, before our tax kicks in, we're trying to figure out how to lower that. Well, one way to do that is itemizing our deductions. So, in our itemized deduction, all right, if we go in there, we have a Schedule A, itemized deductions. So we're gonna open that. And it has the different sections that I talked about. These are some of the areas that you will need to know for the midterm exam. 
part one or part A or whatever you want to call it is medical and dental expenses. All right. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, in order to record those, we will have to go into a worksheet. Okay. Part two is taxes paid. If you look right here, income tax, 2321. That is the tax that was withheld on the uh, is uh, W-2 from the state of New York. So you get to deduct that on your federal uh, itemized deductions, okay? General sales tax, there's a little worksheet inside here, okay? Inside there, we're only gonna be concerned with the bottom part of this worksheet, all right? You can calculate the sales tax that you've paid throughout the year. We go into New York. For us, letter B. All right. It asks, do you locally impose a general sales tax? Yes, we do. We're going to say we live in Erie County, so 4.75. All right. And we did not enter line zero on there, so we get to enter the state, which is 4.0. Okay. This calculation right here of $866 is what they figure that Jason on his income paid in sales tax throughout the year, okay? You can see we get to pick the greater of the two. For somebody that's a W-2 employee, state tax withheld from their paycheck is always going to be greater. For somebody that's maybe retired that doesn't have state tax taken out of anything and still might itemize, the sales tax is gonna be greater. Now, one thing we could do to increase our sales tax is down here below, if we bought a new car, aircraft, boat, home, uh, mobile home, camper, something motorized like that, we can deduct the actual sales tax. This is on the purchase of a car, not a lease. So we can put that in there, okay? All right. Okay, so back to our Schedule A, we got our taxes paid. We're going to look at our interest that you paid. Typically, this is only mortgage interest, not interest on any type of personal loans like a car or a credit card or, you know, just a general line of credit. You could deduct your home equity line of credit on this, but nothing that is, uh, does not have the house as collateral. We have gifts to charity. All right, and those are the areas that we're going to cover today. Now, we're gonna take a look at um, the sheet on 135 in your workbook. It says, Jason bought a home on February 1st of the current tax year for $95,000. He does not know exactly what he can deduct, but he has brought in a lot of information. Jason has receipts for all the items, which for keeping wise is very important, okay? Starts out, he's got some medical expenses. So, we're on our Schedule A. We're gonna to go to line one. If we go in there, we have a link. And if you look, we have an itemized deduction detail worksheet. We're gonna open that. Here at the top, medical expenses, okay? All these things, plus some other things that are listed in your textbook, can be deducted as medical expenses. So let's go through what he has. He had, a urgent care expense. So we're going to put in urgent care, okay? All right, you could put in there if you wanted to. We're just going to put general medical expenses, okay? Oops, he had $900 there, okay? He had doctor bills. So he had some doctor co pays, it sounds like, okay? Of $322. He has dentist bills, all right, of $1,540. Must have had a crown done, okay? We have prescriptions, okay, of $600. He got some new glasses, must have been designer frames, for $850, okay? The next one. Over-the-counter medicine, okay? Over-the-counter medicine does not include, is not included as an itemized deduction. It's not a qualified medical expense. It must be prescriptions. 
So even if your doctor prescribes you to take aspirin, it is still an over-the-counter drug, okay? The other thing that I want you to notice up above, it talks about do not list any pre-tax dollars or reimbursed by insurance or health savings accounts. So most people have health insurance as a benefit from their employer. That insurance is taken out of your gross pay to lower your taxable income. So you get the deduction on your paycheck. You cannot double dip and take what was taken out of your paycheck as insurance premiums paid on your tax return for itemized deductions, okay? Health savings accounts, if you have a health savings account, the money that you use out of that to pay your um, prescriptions or any other qualified medical expenses or co-pays, you cannot record as itemized deductions because you are taking the deduction for health savings account that we'll talk about in chapter uh, 10, okay? So those are things that you cannot do. That would be a double dip, okay? And in this case, he's not paying for insurance because we know he had no health insurance and paid the penalty, all right? Uh, the next one down, medical mileage. You get 23 cents a mile for all of your drives to your doctors, dentists, anything for qualified medical expenses. If somebody lives in Lockport and they have to go down to the medical campus near Roswell and Buffalo General, those miles driven, you know, even if they're driving down there twice a week for rehabilitation, those are counted 23 cents a mile. So he has 328 miles that he drove, okay? Next, we have some mortgage interest and property tax from his new home. So we're gonna go back to Schedule A, okay? We've already talked about taxes paid. Now it says that he has real estate taxes. If you look at page 137 at the top, we have a little 1098A, or excuse me, 1098 document that has all the information about his mortgage. In this case, he's in an escrow account. So, seeing that he's in escrow, his taxes are included. We see in box four that he has his property taxes, so we can put the taxes there on his principal residence, okay? In here also is some remainders. We'll talk about these when we get into uh, self-employment and rental property, okay? Other taxes paid. Well, if Jason had couple hundred acres down in the southern tier that he went deer hunting on and paid property taxes down there, he could deduct that also, okay? So he has that, all right? Now, other taxes too, if he paid New York State disability insurance, that little $31.20 you see out of your paycheck, he could put that on here also, all right? Now, the next thing down on that 1098, it shows that he paid interest. Well, again, interest remainder for these two at the beginning of uh, line 10 are from uh, home business, home office, and uh, rental properties. We're not gonna worry about that. We can see here, home mortgage interest in points from a 1098. All right, so we have two things. Box one has mortgage interest, and box two on his 1098 has points paid. We use our calculator, get F5, we have 43, and we're gonna add, all right, that gets his total interest paid, okay? So we have that. Line 11, if you bought a house from somebody and you could not get a mortgage, but they said, well, we'll hold the mortgage personally, then that individual would be holding the mortgage and you make the payments to them, you'd have to provide information. The big one is ID number, their social security number, okay? because if you're going to deduct the interest that you pay to them, they have to declare it as income, all right? Jason did not have mortgage insurance premiums or PMI, but you are allowed to deduct your PMI. So if his statement had PMI on there, that would be in there, all right? The other thing that's in escrow that some people ask about is insurance, okay? Home insurance, that is not deductible, okay? So, we have his real estate taxes and his mortgage interest in there, all right? 
Next thing down in 135 for his new house, he bought a new dishwasher. Not deductible, not even the sales tax. Car loan interest, again, because it's not interest to on, tied to the home, he does not get to deduct it. Is it a personal loan? Same thing with the next one down on credit card finance charges. You cannot deduct those, okay? Now, we get into some contributions. We're gonna go on our tree on the left and we're gonna go back to our little detail sheet where at the top, we did medical expenses. As we move down, we can see that we have some contributions. We have cash contributions and we have other than cash. Well, right now it shows that he gave to his church. He gave 24.55, okay? All right. He also gave to the United Way. Remember on his W-2, we saw that United Way contribution for $104, okay? And he had some other miscellaneous receipted contributions. You know, maybe he bought, uh, you know, he gave an extra dollar at Tops for the red tennis shoe. Or he bought a $20 bag of Boy Scout popcorn that if you bought the same bag of popcorn in the store, it might be $4. So he gets to deduct 16 okay? So here he has miscellaneous receipted of $490, okay? All right. And... He was a Boy Scout leader, okay? Charitable miles, as long as you're not receiving anything in return as a volunteer, and you do not have a son or daughter or relative that is in that charity where you would be there anyway, you can take those. So in this case, he's truly volunteering his time as a Boy Scout leader, and the time to go do that, he's driven 210 miles, okay? All right, down below, we have other than cash contributions. As the line says here, if we give more than $500, we'll be required to do the form 8283. All right, okay? So we're gonna put in there and see what we're gonna give. He gave clothing to the AMVETS, all right? Giving clothing to the AMVETS, it cost him all those clothes he gave, $1,200, but it has a fair market value right now of $475. So we can take the 475, the fair market value. Okay? So you can see up here, 475 is less than 500. We don't need to do the worksheet. All right? If we needed to do the worksheet, all right, we would have to fill out the name and address of the organization. So if it was Goodwill, we'd put the address. If it was a car, we'd have to put the VIN number. Uh, description of donated property. Typically in here, if you're giving things, you can just put clothing and household items. But if it's a car, you have to give more detail. All right. Down below, on those donations that we gave to the spot A, we put date of donation. Don't worry about the date acquired because obviously if it's closed, you bought them over a period of time. We don't need to worry about that. We can put purchased under column F. Your basis you don't have to go back and figure out what you paid for, okay? Just take the fair market value divided by 0.3. The method used to determine the market value, if you remember in your textbook in the reading in chapter uh, 11, it talked about uh, the goodwill and gave you a little chart. Basically what the fair market value for most things is thrift store pricing. So you can just type in there for method used to determine thrift store pricing what you would get in a thrift store if they were to sell those goods that you uh, donated. That would be their fair market value, okay? So, we've completed his Schedule A. Medical-wise, he didn't get to 10% of his gross income, so he doesn't get to count any of his medical. If the number here that is 4287 were the number 5130, he would have $1 of medical deductions. So it's very tough to get those, okay? We can see his taxes taken out of his paycheck, his real estate taxes. We can see his mortgage interest with its points. We can see his charitable contributions. 
Uh, these bottom part we'll talk about later. But we can see right now he itemized for $14,812. Obviously, that is much greater than $6,300 that was his standard deduction. So if we look up in the corner, his blue box, he's reduced his tax bill to $202 federal and state of $155. So you can see, as a homeowner, he had a huge advantage because he was able to get rid of a lot of his income. So we can see how we lowered his taxable income before we calculated the tax. In this case for him, it's a good thing because he does not have any refundable credits or non-refundable credits, okay? Just as withholding. So other than the fact that he did not have health insurance, those were the only things that are down below here. So that generates his bill of 202, okay? A lot more of this is covered in detail in the lectures that'll be up on the website for chapters eight and 10, but I uh, just want to kind of give you an overview on these, okay? All right, gonna open up the mics and see if we have any questions. Any questions here? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You know what, this is kind of a Odd question. I probably could right click to find it, but like looking at the itemized deduction detail worksheet, um, right in like where we typed urgent care 900, there's a little asterisk up there. And what's that thing in the middle? <laughs> what's that? A, a what's detail that? one? Yeah, what is that little asterisk thing? How do you find out what that is? Is that an F1 kind of thing? Okay. See, it says, what, yeah, what it says other medical I'm expenses, saying, yeah. urgent care, and then there's a little asterisk up above it. And then over to the right, of course, is the number. Okay, so we're on the detail sheet. Yeah, I, I see those a lot in different places. See right there in the middle, that little column of little boxes. The last you know, urgent care. Um, to, yeah, right there. Yep. That's if you what want to put uh, the asterisk on there. If you want to yeah. put in their tax, um, see where it says here, use that. If you want to put taxpayer, spouse, or joint. So if you want to keep track of who you're splitting things for. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times those little columns like that will be if you want to designate that some medical expenses for the taxpayer. Some people like it broken down that way. Um, okay. Obviously, if it's a, a single return, you know, you really don't need to put taxpayer because that's the only person on it. You know, joint return. Okay, some so at, anytime return. you see one of those little thick columns with a little asterisk, that just means... Um, you can put it a T or S or just leave it alone, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, let's see, Robert asked, no, uh, the um, $104 for the United Way did not get deducted twice. Because that United Way is inside of the box 14 on the W-2, it doesn't flow anywhere. So we have to remember to bring it over to our little worksheet here. Okay, it does show up on the W-2, but because it's in this box 14 area, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just kind of recorded. So we have to remember to bring it over to our cash contributions there. Okay. All right. Any other questions about itemized? All right. Any other questions about any material that we've had so far? Yeah. What's that? Uh, yeah. Where do you get the school codes for the state? The school codes for the state? Yeah. Um, when you're doing your tax return here for the school district number. Okay. Okay. If you go in there, hit F1. Everybody see that little screen that popped up okay? I see nothing on it, but... <laughs> okay. Sometimes this doesn't uh, show up. Um, you hit F1 in there, and you can say, see F1 help? When you hit F1, you're going to have a little thing on the left, a little purple book. Codes. Uh, it's just a little icon that has a purple book, and you can go in there, okay? okay. All right. Can you see the tax return at all? The what? Can you see the tax return I'm on right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the F1, the boxes don't pop up. 
but if you had F1, those will be in there. Okay. Okay. I will. Let me add, and I will send out to everybody. I have a cheat sheet for myself, but I will send a sheet with school codes out for everybody, so you don't have to worry about hunting in there. For Chautauqua County. Uh, yeah, I can add Chautauqua. Because that's where most of them are going to be. Sure. Yeah. Down in the Jamestown area. Yep. Yep. I'll just kind of do a little cheat sheet for some of the counties in the area. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. What I'm going to have you guys work on is there is a problem from Chapter 8 that has railroad in it. Okay? Don't shoot me. But the railroad ones are we very rarely. I think in five years I've done three of them and it was all out in Akron and I don't know why it was in Akron, but there must be a lot of retired railroad people out there. All right. I just want you to have knowledge of it. 99.9% .9 of chances, you'll never see this. Okay. But I'm going to have you go through it. I will send you a PDF of the return, which means I'll send you a copy of how the return looks like when it's completed. It's one of those returns you just got to be careful because you're going to have this RRB 1099, a blue one, a green one, and I don't want you caught up in it. I want you to understand more the 1099Rs and the SSA 1099s. Those are your focus because that is 99% of people's retirement. Okay? All right. Uh, the other thing I'm going to have you do is 11.2 and 11.3. So problems 11, 2, and 11, 3. All right. And I'm going to have you read 10 and 12. So you're going to read chapters 10 and 12 and do those quizzes. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. What, what was the homework for um, chapter 8, the first one? What was the problem? Was there oh, I'm sorry. Uh, chapter 8 is... Um, Hold on one second. Yeah. We have the problem number. It is problem number eight two. Okay. Cool. Eight, eight two, eleven two, and eleven three out of the workbook. Yep. Read ten and twelve, and do the quizzes for ten and twelve. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't done the quiz for eleven, that one too. Okay. That will get you for us and be ready that everything that we've done so far will be everything for you need to know for both the written and the computer portion of the midterm. 